up everybody it's your boy the kryptonian saying here bringing you a review for one piece chapter 668 and i'm gonna say this shit is interesting so luffy has joined up with law it's official luffy after checking to make sure that they're not going after the best friend for luffy in the whole entire world shanks the guy that we met all the way back in chapter one who gave luffy the straw hat who ended up losing his arm to protect luffy the guy who i feel like luffy looks at him if not like a father figure then definitely like just like a really really big uh, inspirational figure and so i like the fact that that is there and the reason why i say that Luffy probably made sure it's because the first thing he asks when he hears all this shit about the alliance, he says, hey, yeah, uh, which emperor do you want to take down? And it's just like the only one he has a connection to would be Shanks. And so now it's just a matter of figuring out who it's going to be. And so I feel like right now you have two suspects. Blackbeard, I'm still sticking on to you know, my theory that Blackbeard, because of the two devil fruits and because he's... The guy that we met at Jaya, who I completely did not see coming, like when he, he's just this big goofy looking fat sloppy Uncle Sam looking motherfucker at the bar with Luffy and they're just talking about dreams never die. I never thought that Blackbeard would be who he was. I never thought that. And I want to say this, right? When you look at that, he has the makings of being a final villain. Because there's too much that's entangled there. Like Luffy's story started with Shanks. Like that's where that started technically in the manga. Like when you go chronologically chapter one. So it started with Shanks. Shanks has a little bit of an issue with Blackbeard. In a way I kind of feel like Shanks feels a little bit responsible. Because if he could have convinced Whitebeard to back off. Then Ace would probably still be alive. Like if he could have succeeded in that. And then the other thing is it's like with Big Mom. Luffy... Fishman Island, it's just like, well, oh, to go back there, it's possible. But at the same time, I get the vibe that when you look at Oda and you look at it, it will be very bad marketing if we've seen all the other emperors. Like we saw Shanks show up and it's made known that he's one of the emperors. He shows up in Marine Fort, Whitebeard dies, a new emperor ascends in Blackbeard. Uh, Big Mom, we got like the little cock tease cameo. The only one we hadn't seen is Kaido. So by process of elimination, it has to be Kaido. So that's going to be interesting. And I think that'd be a good way to kind of break it in because that's the guy, if I'm not mistaken, when the Navy was keeping tabs on what's going on in the New World, if I'm not mistaken, they were talking something along the lines that Shanks was making Kaido his bitch. So when you look at that, that makes the most sense for Straw has to kind of break their teeth on one of the emperors but i'm getting the feeling that this is a really fucking big deal because as soon as luffy even agrees to it nami while she's in frankie's body is just like no 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 you need to rethink this and i'm like oh shit the emperor's like i knew the emperors were a big deal but i didn't think they were this big of a deal so it's just like they're a really big deal and then when the rest of straw hats learn that luffy's done this they're like you need to rethink this and i like nico robin for this man like, i throw like a lot of shade at nico robin but i totally love this right what nico robin did in this moment is she looked around and she said luffy i'll follow you wherever you go and it's just like on some real shit dude on some real shit no trolling okay but nico robin just showed everything that i like not just in a woman but just in a friend Right, whatever it is, like I might do the most fucked up stuff. Support me, okay? Just support me. You might not agree with me, but support me. And if I fall on my face, don't rub it in don't rub it in my face. Just be there and say, Hey, what can I do to help? That's it. And then after we get some time removed, you can say, Hey, this was a bad idea. You probably should have did things this way. Like that's man, I swear to God, dude. Like, if more, and now I'm going to get personal, if more women would understand that, it, you wouldn't have as many fights and stuff as you tend to have when you get into relationships and everything. And, I mean, I don't want to get too personal on that, but, I mean, it, it, relationships, fighting, I mean, shit like that happens. So, what I do like about that, though, what I do like is that Nico Robin was just like, I'm just going to ride with you, Luffy. Like, wherever you go, I'm, I'm going to be there for you. So, that was pretty damn awesome how Nico Robin... The person who left the crew is the first one to say, Luffy, I got you. So that was pretty good. That was really, really good. And I think a, a good thing to do was 
Sorry about that. I think a good thing to do is when it comes to Nico Robin, I get my train of thought for a second. When it comes to Nico Robin, if you compare her to sports, right? Nico Robin understands. Like, you can be Kevin Love on the Minnesota Timberwolves, and you can be like the driving force or one of the driving forces on a losing team, like all these other uh, great pirates that she's worked under, like Crocodile. And eventually that crashed and burned because that's part of the hero's journey where when you have the path of the tyrant, like how Crocodile was on, any house that he builds up is going to be destined to fall. It's going to be, he's going to hide behind his labor of uh, mazes. And eventually everything's going to come crashing down because he's made all the wrong decisions. Luffy's currently on the hero's journey and Luffy's accepted the call to adventure. And so when you look at that, Luffy is on the right path. And so she understands this. Nico Robbins is like, I don't want to be Kevin Love on the uh, Timberwolves. I want to be Kevin Love on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like I might not get all the props, but I do my damn thing and we win. So, and I hate that because I do not like LeBron James. But I, I, I like that. I like I don't like LeBron James fans, but I, I like how Oda just kind of made that in there to where Robin was the one who came in and the rest of the Straw Hats eventually. A star getting a little on board, but you can tell there's some hesitation. I can't wait to find out what Zoro does and what Sanji does. Because when you look at Zoro, Zoro, I'm not sure how much Zoro would know about the Empress, but the fact that he's trained with Mihawk lets me know that Zoro's probably got some intel because Mihawk is one of the uh one of the seven warlords. And so that will let me know, okay, obviously Zoro probably has some stuff in there with Sanji. I mean, Sanji knows a lot about the Grand Line, just from uh, traveling with Zeph. So I, I think that that's me interesting. If those two freak out, then I know right off top that this was a really bad idea, and Luffy just got the Straw Hats into one amazing clusterfuck. And the reason I call it an amazing clusterfuck is this can turn out really good or really bad. And I like how one of the things we find out is that when it comes to pirate alliances, and it makes sense, but when it comes to pirate alliances... Betrayal is a part of it. So I don't know if that's maybe foreshadowing that eventually Luffy and Law are going to have a falling out. And even Law at times looks like he's getting pissed off because when he's just like, hey, Alliance doesn't work this way. And I'm paraphrasing the scene, but, you know, basically it's, it gets told to Luffy that Alliances don't work like this. Alliances don't work like this. Your crew doesn't dictate what goes on. You're the fucking captain. And eventually Law just gets to the point after Chopper just, you know, jumps on his head you know, Law is just like, look, this is going to be a plan. And when your crew gets here, after you show me you're competent enough to capture Caesar, I'll explain the rest of the clown, uh, the, the plan, but once that clown is captured, everything's going to go downhill really, really quickly. There's no turning back. And Luke's just like, fuck this, I'm all in. What we got to do? Whose ass I got to whoop? Wait, Nami want to stay here with the kids. See, Luffy, get this shit. Where Nami want to stay, you stay there. And I don't like that shit, right? I don't like how she's in, in, in Sanji's body because she's suffering right now. She in Curly Eye's uh, uh, body. And if you can't tell, I'm starting to go a little bit more towards Team Zoro. Like, I, li I like Sanji. I typically like the perverted characters. And Sanji's a lot of fun to read. Like, when he got into Nami's body, like, in the last volume, I was fucking hilarious. But starting to drift more towards... Uh, team Zoro a little bit, man. I know that's a rivalry in the fan of Zoro versus Sanji, so maybe something happened in this arc that changes that for me. I mean, it does tend to flip-flop between arcs for me, but I like how when uh, Law is breaking everything down, you know, Luffy is just like, hey, look, it's nothing to worry about. I got two years of training, and then you guys got two years of training. We're going to be great. <laughs> it's just like, Luffy, I, I just love this super candid personality Luffy has where it's just like, yeah, I'm not really worried about nothing. Let's just go get some black and miles. Let's go get, you know, smoke, get some handy and everything. We're going to turn up in this bitch and then we're going to go kick some ass. And it's just like, and then after the fact, we're going to turn up again and party and sing and work, play my music. Usopp, tell my lies. Nico Robin. And this would be a joke for you guys to do the, uh, the, the, the one piece, uh, dub and everything. Like, I remember, uh, I think it was, I know it was four kids. You know, one of the things, uh, Nico Robin was saying, she said, Hey, yeah, what's your talent? And she says, I do grub outs. <laughs>
<laughs> hey man, they said some dirty shit, man. I was you can't tell me. Just like the tone that she said in, that had to have been really, really that was in there and just like Usopp's reaction after that. But yeah, anyway, 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 right? Like all that shit aside, I did think it was pretty interesting that when you see Smoker and Tashigi and Tashigi's looking over the list and it's so funny to see Smoker like Tashigi and Smoker's body and Smoker looks like a bitch and he's just so rough and rugged and Tashigi just has these soft expressions and you got Smoker with the cigar and everything inside of her body it's just like this was this was beautiful I love this whole thing with changing the bodies and everything like I I think that I, I think that that has some room to for some more potential going forward. But what I really loved about that is Tashigi is just like, yeah, look at all this, look at all this. These are all former prisoners, and it's just like everything Law saying is correct. Like Caesar has fucked up. He has fucked up. He has gotten caught. Smoker, there's a reason why he wants him dead because if word gets out, his whole thing has been blown up and we find out his main motivation is he's basically going to turn his nose up at the world government and up at what Dr. Vegapunk was doing which was essentially Vegapunk and the world government were working on building their own giant army and so basically Caesar is experimenting on these kids which is why some of them look so fucking big why they're addicts and everything this was just very very beautiful. It just shows you, and and this could go a different way. Uh, well, I got some younger viewers on here, and I, I'm just gonna drop some some conspiracy stuff for you. But like, I remember when, excuse me, I remember when I was living with my uncle down in Florida, right? And I was working with him in uh, the rehab center. I'm pretty sure I said this in the last review or the one before this. Whenever I got found out the kids were you know basically addicts and everything, strung the fuck out. But when I was working at a rehab center with him. One of the things that, you know, uh, he was talking to me about and, you know, another dude in there, you know, they were talking the whole thing about how they believe that, you know, the United States government at some point began pumping in a lot of drugs into not just black communities, but just minority communities. And I don't fully buy into it, but I mean, I do think that, you know, some of the stuff they said makes a lot of sense. And that's a conspiracy that has been going on with other countries as well where you take some of the poorest areas and you allow drugs to get funneled through there. And I wonder if Oda's kind of touching on that a little bit because the world government is essentially producing drugs. Like, yes, it's to create super soldiers and everything, but you're still creating drugs and you're still doing it in an underhanded method. And it's just so interesting. Like when you look at some of the drugs that were being pumped out into the 80s, now we have the opioid epidemic. And it's just like, how far does it go? So, I mean, this is this is interesting that you see all of this. And I want to close out the chapter here. If you can't tell, I really enjoyed this chapter. But I'm going to close the chapter out right here. What I also thought was pretty interesting is that when the law finds out that you have some of the straw hats who are looking for uh, the separate pieces of the samurai, law just looks like he's about to shit himself. Because if I'm not mistaken... Law was the one that cut this dude up. So if that happened, I said, I'm pretty damn certain I remember reading that. So if that happened, right, if that happened and he's been chopped the fuck up and everything, even if uh, it didn't get stated, that's Law's devil fruit ability. So, you know, like, hey, mic drop. But if they piece them together, is that going to void the alliance with Luffy and them? Because Luffy, I mean, Luffy was just riding around with this dude's legs like, hey, fucking Senator. So... How's that going to work? And so that's going to be my uh, chapter question for you guys is on a scale from 1 to 10, how big would something like that be in breaking Luffy and Law's alliance? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching today in the video, guys. Have an awesome day.